Yeah, an actual, real Inmendum video on the Inmendum channel, yes. Just a special, let's call it. Um, for two purposes. Three, maybe. Um, first, there seems to be people who don't really get the whole links below thing. And, um, yeah, I'm still making videos, I just don't post them on YouTube. Because my account has a strike on it, and strikes are dangerous. So I'm waiting for the strike to go away, and such. So there are links in a thing called the description box below. There might even be a more button or something, and you can hit that, and the links show up. And you can hit the links, and they go to pages. Yeah. Um, too much trouble, then it's too much trouble. Sorry. Uh, so, I, I, you know, so, so this is part of the problem. And, you know, you have this expectation that people aren't complete imbeciles. I mean, you think they can get something, you know, because you're trying to do this argument thing and persuasion thing, but you don't realize that they really don't even speak any kind of symbolically relevant language. They don't they seem to have no connection to everything that you see in your world where, you know, links have lines under them and they're a different color and you can hit them and, you know, little things. They don't get it. Well, anyway, side is a picture. So, um, there's this uh, ethological person. I didn't know she was lovely and <laughs> quite beautiful and all that kind of stuff. Uh, charming and all that. Um, so, anyway, I may have been slightly impolite. Because, you know, didn't assume it was a girl. Um, but anyway, um, yes, yeah, pleasant surprise. Just really quite, quite, um, quite likable so far. She hasn't said anything really stupid yet. Anyway, very nice. Um, yeah. Kind of like the, whatever, the happy antinatalist or something. What the hell is her name? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, so anyway, it's really, yes, yeah, very nice. Um, so yeah, she's making videos and seems quite interested in um, conversation and um, maybe debate, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so that was sort of the second subject. Because, you know, the, the subject of her video was raising awareness on antinatalism and then some little bit of raggy comments happened on my video. And it's about this whole thing of, like, performance and the, the, the level of our effort and the... Um, utility of what we're doing or how we're doing it. I certainly am willing to accept criticism, you know, by people who say, you suck, Gary, um, at being a poster child for some kind of subject. And okay, I accept that. I mean, it's a huge responsibility, actually, to, to be somebody who is responsible for, in some way or another, carrying the water, uh, you know, the vital holy water of uh, a mission, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like carrying somebody's, you know, dead guy's ashes or something. You fall down the stairs and, you know, or something. It's just, you know, or you drop them in the toilet worse yet or some kind of stupid thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to be a fuck-up. Um, but as I've explained before, I'm a human being. Um, and frankly, a kind of neurotic and fragile one. And, uh, you know, so yeah, if, if, if I was a different person, I could live a different life. <laughs> you know, so I'd, I'd like to be, in some respects, a different person. I'd like to be Mr. Spock and, you know, have all of my little emotions under control and, and not have any kind of problems. But the good news is I don't have any, like, like fake Sagan actually owns a 25-inch knife. See, I would never do that. Um, there's no. Um, it's like I, you know, I, I get angry, but I don't. I don't really hit anything, and I don't hurt anything, and any of that kind of crap. So I'm a safe kind of neurotic or crazy or psychotic or whatever somebody wants to call me. But I am emotionally um, disturbed person. I, I don't. I don't like life and I don't, I don't like people and I, I don't like the world and I don't like any I don't like the facts of life they suck they just absolutely suck and they terrify me not only for myself but you know for the other beasties I'm interact with even some humans 
that I have to be very concerned for. Um, you know them and then you become concerned and they have problems and it's, you know, it's very uncomfortable and disturbing to know that somebody is um, in trouble and in distress and in pain and uh, I don't like it and, and it, um, it weighs on me. It makes me not walk straight. Um, it makes it harder for me to carry the water. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, <laughs> and yeah, people can just mock it and say, you know, I have no excuse or something. But I'm, I'm going to argue. I, I do. I have an excuse to spending a lifetime thinking about this stuff, and it has been most of my life, and every day for most of my life, thinking about. Um, the problems in the world and what's happening to like today was mice day you know today I thought about all the mice created for the purpose of laboratory experimentation and I thought about them having you know ears sewn on their anus and all that kind of crap and all the horrible things that are happening and um, it weighs on you doing that and again, like I said, it's, I haven't been doing it for a few weeks. I've been doing it for decades. Um, I did deliberately. I've explained before. I, you know, my house used to, the whole wall, all the way around the walls, was images of animals. Um, the ones on the, on the walls were mostly attractive. And then I select all the tables with all the animals that are being tortured by humans. Just so it would always be in my mind. Uh, Deliberately, I, I threw it in front of myself. So, um, uh, you know, so while I was being distracted as a human and had my little entertainments, I would recognize that uh, there's a mission here. There's an obligation, and uh, you know, it becomes part of your habit, part of your psychology, and that's what's my psychology now. And I'm not saying it's healthy. I'm not saying that I want other people to live that way. My argument to them is is that you can accept the fact that life sucks and still live your life. Um, I'm not asking you to carry the water. I'm not ask we're not asking other people to carry the water. We're just asking them not to vote for Donald Trump. We're just asking them not to do something insanely stupid and just recognize that what they have to vote for and what they have to argue for in a little tiny sense, like I said, the little voting sense, is that when the subject comes up, they have to say the right thing, not the wrong thing. They have to say, I'm for it. They can't be nitpickers and naysayers and, oh, you can't change the world and nothing can be fixed and nature's indestructible and all this bullshit. Instead of saying, well, let's do what we can, and the least I can do is raise my hand and say, yes, I understand. It's way too expensive. My happiness is too expensive. I understand. I don't have a right to take little jimmy or jamie mouse and so ears on their anuses and i don't have a right to say it's okay for a lion to eat a baby gazelle and i don't have a right to say it's all okay if maggots eat the brain of some other animal and it's okay if some other animal lays eggs inside of some other animal because i'm worth it the the process that provides the bed i sleep in has um, torture. It's made, it's sewn out of torture. It's sewn out of threads of torture. Is that a deniable fact? No. And, and that's all this argument's about, is just somebody not, you know, somebody having enough humility to say, I know that even though I think I'm spectacular and wonderful and creative, I'm very creative and very charming, and very super, I'm a super person, uh, I'm not worth it. It's not that hard to say. I understand. I'm not worth torture. Yeah. So let's not do that anymore. Let's not pay torture, you know, to make new silly people who have silly, exaggerated uh, impressions of how charming they are. Let's not do that. Um, and that's no. And we know that's all we are, right? I mean, you know. There's nothing else running. The gears of our basic psychology is just, oh, I wonder if she thinks I'm hot, or something like that. I mean, there's nothing, 
there's nothing very brilliant in, in, in the basic nature. You people can't admit that? That most of your thoughts aren't very profound or are, are terribly generous to the fact that the rest of the world is covered with feeling biological organisms that you don't spend any time at all considering the welfare of? Come on. Is that that hard to admit? No, it's not. It really isn't. So, anyway, so back to the argument about arguing. So, yeah, I think this is an easy argument to make now. I think in some respects we have created metaphors and images, you know, mental constructs of like the Frankenstein argument and the imposition argument or the drunk driver argument or, um, you know, the even the... the princess in the P. <laughs> There's probably a princess in a P metaphor here somewhere, um, you know, where we just have a perception of how we're worth it. We're worth 46 mattresses or whatever. And we all know that, no, 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 no. Not one sewn out of torture. Sewn out of torture. No, 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 no. Um, and there's no hope of this God theory crap or the singularity crap. The engine that built us is evolution, and it just builds monsters. And yeah, okay, kittens don't look like Tyrannosauruses. But if you really look at what they do, they're Tyrannosauruses. And even Tyrannosauruses probably didn't lick their own anus. But I'm just saying that it's still there. Birds are just dinosaur all over the place. They take little living things going, help me, help me. And, you know, they drop them into their little chicks' mouths and stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a brutal, horrible place, the world. I mean, I've pointed out statistically, if I, if I made a game of life, you would die in the game as a child 99% of the time. So, so when you finally, you always lose but when you lose, you'll, do, you'll lose as a child. You won't even make it out of childhood. That's how brutal nature is. It murders children all over the place. And, and insidiously and horribly. Why are you raising your hand saying, make more of it, make more of it? Why are you doing that? What, what, what delusion is possessing you that you need to do that? You know if the rest of us were Martians and you were the only human, you wouldn't say, make more Martians, make more Martians. You know you wouldn't. There's people right now, you, I know you're out there, you know, you don't even want to make more, you know, blacks or Jews or Arabs or, you don't, you don't like anybody being different. You, you think you're a superior race or something. You wouldn't make any more of them if you had the choice. If you could really press that button, you'd press it to say, no, nah, don't let them into the future. The future is only for us, the cool people. You think that's intelligent? You think that's reasonable? You think that's rational? Or do you think that's just, you like chocolate cake, and you just don't care if somebody else likes lemon cake, or somebody else likes strawberry cake? You don't give a shit, because you're a selfish shit. You can't just admit that it's your selfish ego, your selfish vanity, your nepotism, your nationalism, your racism, that controls your psychology and just admit it, that there's mostly just crap in your head. Can I eat it? Can I fuck it? Can I eat it? Can I fuck it? That's, that's all that's in your head. See, I don't want to say these words anymore. So, so what I'm going to try to do in the future, when I do come back to YouTube in about a month, I think that's when the strikes run out, I'm going to try to make YouTube videos where I don't swear and I just try to have this calm conversation where I don't take anything too seriously and I'm kind of glib like the rest of them and try to just say, uh, oh gee, that's interesting that you don't care, but I can't understand that. Could you explain how not caring makes sense? Because I can't understand how not caring makes sense. How you can watch horrible things happen to other feeling things and it doesn't scare you at all and it just scares the fuck out of me. How do you do that exactly? How do you pretend you're not vulnerable? How do you pretend the things you care about aren't vulnerable and are going to be, you know, destroyed? Mm badly, brutally. How do you pretend that's the reality you're living in? So I can't do that pretending. I, I can't. You want to show me how I draw that cartoon? Because I can't, I, I can't draw it. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> and then I'll make my videos, <laughs> you know, on the website and do my thing. 
um, separate. But I was thinking, this, see, this whole thing of, um, see, people are pissed off as I'm doing this physics thing. And I have to admit, there's a, there's a motivation built into this that isn't, you know, once I found an answer that I think is really quite viable, I realized this could be my way to, to be able to do ethylism by gaining credibility in some other way, you know, or at least popularity, or, you know, it's like dying in a plane crash or something, you know what I'm saying? You get famous in some inadvertent way, and then all of a sudden your book gets published, you know, that kind of nonsense. Um, you know, I'll back into it, you know, through this other mechanism. And certainly it runs through my head that this might be the better way. That's part of the reason why I have a passion for it. Part of it is also that um, it's a personal thing, um, you know, gaining some sort of acknowledgement that, uh, you know, this brain does work pretty well. Um, uh, just, that's just a personal, you know, vanity kind of thing. And the other thing probably is that there's probably also a, a, an economic angle to it, too, where, you know, I might have a secure future instead of having to worry about, you know, what might happen a year from now. Um, because I am in a vulnerable position, really <laughs> vulnerable. And I've been very lucky, and you know maybe my luck's going to run out. And it'd be nice to have a cushion against run out of luck. Um, so those are the motivations. So yeah, I have all kinds of this, you know. I just don't think people can sit there and say they know the right answer with this authority, you know, with this, you know, and, and certainly there's a there's probabilistic equations here, but I don't know how they're capable of judging those. I mean, clearly, you know, most people can't even understand the physics I'm explaining, and it's so much simpler than regular physics, which is so funny. But because I do understand both and can make a comparison, I'm certain it's right. And so I would be stupid not to invest in it if I'm certain, like so certain I'd say, go ahead, you know, gut me in the street if I'm wrong. Because I'm quite certain at least half of what I'm saying is right. Um, no. And so why wouldn't I invest in that? It would seem stupid not to. All right. Now, the idea of being able to take my personality into the, the public arena, I'm saying I'd be very good as a... Um, as a background person, that's always been my argument. I would make a lousy president, but I'd make a very good, uh, whatever you call them, you know, nagger in chief uh, below that, you know, the administrative person of some kind. Um, I'd be good at meetings. And uh, I think I'd be good at s certain, like even a press secretary or something, I might suck at that, but I mean, I might be the guy who works for the press secretary and does the more contextual explanation. Something like that. I'm good at making arguments, in my opinion, <laughs> and uh, I think I could do that. Now, whether I can do it in some way that's um, presentable to a world that reacts to silly things like my hair's too long and, you know, I really don't want to wear a tie and all that bullshit. No, it's hard to say. Or whether you could mold me into somebody who can be... Um, you know, who who is more formed for the public. Maybe that's possible. I, I think I'm somewhat too eccentric regardless. I mean, I have too many, <laughs> uh, too, too many, too many ticks, too many oddities about how I function to ever pull that off as being like some regular person. Uh, but maybe. Um, yeah. So, so, so then, you know, we, so, yeah, we've been dealing with this for, you know, a few years in terms of having conversations, especially me and old fan have done a lot of this, um, musing and thinking back and forth about, um, what it takes to, um, you know, what, what, what we have to do to our performance, uh, to make it more consumable, um, without stealing from it um, part of what makes it doable, which is the fact that we can have a passion for it. So that's another part that might be selfish, um, in the sense that you you want to fight the fight your way. Um, 
you know, you want to wear your kind of soldier suit, and you want to carry your kind of gun, and you want to fight your kind of war. You don't want to do it by somebody else's uh, diagram. And, um, you know, that's just one of those, you know, <sighs> it's hard to know whether the compromise is even possible, because so much of what has to, so much of what you're constructing in terms of the performance is something that has to come out of you. It can't just be, can't, can't be insincere, or then it doesn't have any, uh, it's not coherent, then it starts to sound like a speech. And there's some people that are really good at, you know, there's people really good at reading teleprompters, and there's people who suck at it. I would be in the suck category. Um, so I have to make it real for me. Um, I can't try. Because if I start trying, I'll start failing. Kind of. Uh, or, you know, you're free to say failing even worse. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. Um, yeah, so so I, I'm not satisfied that I've done the best I could have done in the theoretical sense. I mean, obviously, it's a deterministic world. I did the best I could do because that's what the tools I had and the way they got mixed up and how I rebounded and, you know, ping-ponged ball into my present. And the fact that I'm aware of these performance issues can mean at least that there's some potential for me to find a way to do this better. Um, but I'm not at all confident that other people's um, um, claims uh, that they know the magic secret, writing a book or some other thing, um, that that's going to solve the problem. Um, especially if you write a book that's a forced book. And this is another point I've been trying to make is that um, I've always talked about making the perfect argument, making the, you know, like it's a, like a Monty Python skit it reminds me of this, um, you know, where they had a joke that was fatal. You know, it was like the perfect joke, and anybody who heard it laughed to death. And so you're sort of looking for that piece of perfect rhetoric, the, the, the perfect stream of, of performance, of speech and emphasis and passion and Maybe you even sing a little of it. So you know, some kind of whatever it takes to keep people interested, to get them where they live, to pluck a nerve in their brain that vibrates and doesn't stop vibrating, that kind of thing. And that's what we're after. We're trying to hit the right notes. Notes that work on 90% of people, not 2% of people. And, you know, my argument would be a book works on 2%. It, it doesn't have, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm more arguing that we need more of a documentary or a movie or something like that. And I, like I said, I think old fans made it really, it, it's just it's a brilliant piece of performance art. Now, it just might not be um, mainstream enough, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a piece of work, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, um, and so I was in that vein, I've been thinking, well, you know, Gary, this isn't that difficult, right? You just say, make one minute, one good minute every day for 60 days, and then you got 60 minutes, right? Um, but I mean, it is so much easier to say that than to do that, uh, because you have to basically you kind of have to know, you have to know the end of the book before you can write the beginning of the book, and you kind of have to know, you know, you have to connect the, the dots. That's a theme I like now, too, so that just came up the other day, talking about logic and how it's kind of simple, that that's all you're really doing is connecting dots of evidence, and that logic isn't really a process. Logic is sort of dictated by where the dots land on the paper. Um, how connectable they are. Uh, the threads of torture. Big dot. Um, so, um, yeah, so I want to do something with this, 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 that theme. That theme is enough for me to say, gee, there's so many ways you could work that into a, a documentary of just putting it together as, a, as an image that gets 
more and more resolved as you work yourself through the argument. The dots become clearer and clearer and the, the resolution gets clearer and clearer as you add up the dots. And you see the image of Ethelism. Life backwards rather than forward and life, life as a, a bunch of bloody knives. You know, a bunch of tooth and claw. Like, see, 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 even just spelling the word life with the actual teeth and the actual claws, <laughs> you know, that might be a, just a simple piece of symbolism. Might be a good way to spell ephalism in actual teeth and claws. Um, just to, to make the point that that's the world we live in, this competitive, grinding process to replicate a stupid molecule we're, we're not even the thing that's getting made the thing that's getting made by us is a dna configuration we're just the we're this we're the suckers being used for the purpose um you know we're as owned as a, a sperm in the sense that we're just the 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 demonstration model we're, you know the we're the the testing machine we're, we're not even the we're not even the thing being made. We're just testing the molecule. Yeah. Anyway. So it's something that's always present in terms of thinking about performance and how to mainstream. Um, but that, like I said, if anybody who thinks the mainstream has any rationality to how it chooses what's the subject of the day. Of course it doesn't. I mean, it does these silly stories about, you know, whatever. They save some dogs in South Korea. You know, and they'll spend five days on the news talking about the save the dogs they rescued. At so much money expended that they could have rescued thousands of them here. <laughs> yeah. At least they could have given uh, thousands of animals a humane death. You know. I mean, do you think poor people are really going to spend $300 to have their pet euthanized? I mean, we really have to do something about this, this insane price to die. Insane price. Um, you know, in the whole health care debate, right? The $10,000 a year it takes that officers are paying for health care. You know, that's the system price. $10,000 a year. People don't spend that on, some people don't have to spend that on a mortgage. I mean, it's a huge amount of money. For what? To die horribly. Most of the money is spent dying badly. Um, that makes sense? No, no, no. Well, that's, those are separate subjects. So, um, mostly separate. <sighs> Alright, so, yeah, I'm sorry. I was dragging on a bit. Um, I, you know, I mean, I got more into the specifics than I wanted to get into, but I mean, you sort of have to, to get into the point that this is a difficult subject, and it's difficult to bring up in, in the context of a, a media and a popularity engine that dem demands that you don't offend them, that you don't, you know, in some, don't do it, you have to do everything politically correctly. You can't violate any specific rules or you're dead. And that's the demand. And so it's such a fine line to walk if you're going to try to do it on purpose. And like I said, most of the stuff that's news in the world isn't news because it tried to do something meritorious. It's news because it failed in some sort of ludicrous way. Um, that's, that's where the news goes. And uh, that's what people find interesting is colossal failure, not brilliant success. Um, as stated uh, before, I've made these analogies, but I mean, all the money spent on sports and how much money is spent rewarding people for spending 10 years in college and actually learning how to actually do something constructive. <laughs> you know, people don't think about giving them any gold medals. It's just so stupid. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, it's a hard system to want to win in, you know, to win in the popularity, uh, you know, uh, uh, be interesting in the conventional cute kitty way. Um, 
is um, it's almost a negative accomplishment. Uh, the standards are ludicrous and disconnected from anything meritorious. It's winning the farting contest. It's not winning the um, you earned it through some sort of legitimate labor or legitimate inspiration. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's that's it. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, so what part I play in all this? Who knows? Again, I, I've sort of pointed out before that I'm, I'm better as a background person. Somebody else should be the poster child. And you know, so we can find those people. That would be good, <laughs> you know, because yeah, I don't. I'm I'm just I'm not really cut out for it. Um, but you know, there there are things where I should try to network and I should try to do some of this stuff. But it's just that I'm so bad at it. Um, I hate being a fake, and I hate pretending, and um, I hate playing by those kind of narrow rules. But I'll try a little harder, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. So anyway, that's enough of a video. Um, so, yes, I'm currently posting videos on the Do Not God website. There's other links. I mean, I have, the, you know, I have created other things. And, you know, my videos are accessible and there are links on those things and I just don't you know I have like 20 websites it just seems like it shouldn't be that hard to find me but anyway regardless um, there's links below this video on YouTube um, click on them and you'll be able to see my videos yeah all right if you, you know whatever yeah so enough so and uh, yeah yeah, this is very. Uh, I think this is. I think this is going to be a good one. <laughs> yeah, I know that people have been disappointing. You know, I mean, people show up and they, you know, turn into fucktards in no time. And you know, I've had such a. <laughs> I've had such a poor ability to um, find people dependable or reliable. But we'll see. I'm feeling good about this one. It doesn't mean anything. It's a, just a visceral thing. Uh, emotional. Yeah. But we'll see. Uh, so, till next time.